in order to teach their selfish teenagers to consider other people. Both families have agreed to send them to live with new parents on the other side of the world. Have a good experience, yeah. and when you come back, come back with a big smile on your face. Yes. Yeah? yeah. All right, honey. Yeah. All right, then. I love you. Okay. Yes. yes. I hope he will come back with just a real insight into what he has got—a real sort of acceptance. I don't want to grow distant from him. I want to grow. Um, you know, I want us to be as close as we possibly can. Listen, have a lovely time and be good. I will. I'll miss you. Bye-bye. Bye. My worst fear would be just embarrassing herself, really, if spoilt and having temper tantrums and things like that. That I wouldn't like her to behave like that. Hi, you OK? Yeah, fine. What's your name? Eden. Eden, I've had a stage. Nice to meet you, darling. Nice to meet you. Hi. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm good. N nervous? No, not really. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For the next 10 days, the two teenagers' new home will be here, Astatula, Florida. Obedience is one of the most important things that we are training them to understand. We want to raise them in love and discipline, and that's our parent philosophy. <laughs> Dad Lindsay and Mum Jeannie preside over four children. Lindsay the fourth, Austin and Dylan, and daughter Elizabeth. We feel like it's our responsibility as parents to be in control of the music that they listen to, the movies they watch, and the friends they have. Perfect. We have trained our children to work from the time they were little. And one of the things that I feel is effective is I'll make a list of the chores in the morning, I'll make a list for the children, and I'll make a list for my wife. And it kind of gives them a guideline on what's expected of them for the day. And my oldest daughter absolutely loves it. She tells me, Dad, I'd rather have it on a list. It's important to be obedient. Um, with my parents, you, you, uh, you have to be obedient. <laughs> no. After an eight-hour flight, Anastasia and Eden touch down in Orlando, Florida. You're gonna have to help me get this in. Oh! Orlando is home to the world's largest holiday resort. Over a million Brits come here every year for a taste of the happiest place on Earth. I'd much rather be going to Disneyland, to be honest with you. <laughs> Where they're headed 30 miles away is no theme park. <laughs> the Armstrongs live deep in the heart of Florida's Lake County on a secluded 10-acre property. Now we're in the middle of nowhere. We're in a swamp. I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park. They're coming, finally. Mr. Lindsay. Hi, I'm Jeannie. What's your name, sorry? Excuse me? What's your name, sorry? Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Jeannie. Jeannie, how are you? Eden. How are you doing, man? Good, man. Good, good. How was your trip? Oh, long. Hi, was it long? Jeannie, nice That's to me. meet you. That's Eden. Thank you. I'm going to tell you guys something real yeah. quick wow. while we're out here. I've seen bears. I've seen cougars. Yeah. Uh, there are some yeah. poisonous snakes. No, there's not. Yeah, so it's best to stay within the perimeter of the fence. You guys gonna come meet our kids? Yeah. All right. From now on, Anastasia and Eden will be living exactly as the Armstrong children do, from daily chores to daily worship. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 
Lindsay. Anastasia. 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 Hi, Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Anastasia. 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 Austin. Austin. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah. This is. Our front room. This is the living room. This is where we have devotions and we laugh and we talk and play and our music. <laughs> All right, there you go. Turn left. And this is your home for the week. If you want to go ahead and get settled a little bit, you can go ahead. This will be your room. Gorgeous. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So if you need something, just let us know and we'll help you. Okay, okay. Yeah. The mum seems nice, but I'm pretty scared of the dad. I didn't know how to address him or anything. Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Lindsay, why do they use that name? A bit anxious now, a bit worried. Not what I expected. But I'm sure I'm quite nice, but maybe too nice, so I just have to see. I have a good feeling that they're neat kids. He feels like kids. my son as soon as I saw him. I feel like I just wanted to hug him, but I, I, I hugged him a little bit. So but yeah, sweet. I just, you know, it just, it just is hard. I feel like we connected. Eden, Anastasia. Lindsay and Jeannie believe in protecting their children from corrupt outside influences. We're going to go ahead and go over our house rules. So before the teens join the family, they must sign up to the Armstrong's clean living lifestyle. We have spent 20 years uh, building this family. And it took certain rules, regulations, discipline. And we have to look at this like you are our kids for the week. So I'm going to love you, discipline you, and make you work, just like our kids. OK? Excellent. I know it's going to be different for you. And it's kind of odd. You handed a paper full of rules. So let me go ahead and just drop a little uh, miniature bomb. I don't let my children raise their voice at me. You, you can't raise your voice or sass back. And it comes out when you say, you know, I really don't want to do this versus I don't want to do this. It's like, okay, wait a minute, well, we have a problem. Is that, is that clear? And in our home, we only listen to Christian music, basically. We're just careful that the kids aren't listening to stuff with curse words or cuss words and immoral content. So the next one is about clothing. And I, I've taught my daughter this, no low shirts, short shorts, <laughs> <laughs> or bikinis unless they're worn under your clothes. My wife would be like the gauge for you. So she yeah. may glance yeah, at I'll you just, and then you guys discuss it. Yeah, so I'll just have to help you with that. We'll, we'll kind of talk about that, yeah. <laughs> Rules are a bit weird, different, very extreme. They're really probably the most controlling people I've ever met. And I thought my mum was controlling. They can tell me what to wear, but at the end of the day, I'm not the daughter. They can't stop me. I'm wearing it. So what are they going to do, give me a bin bag to wear all week? Sometimes when we show more of our bodies than we should, there's um, wrong thoughts that can, can um, come up in our minds. And we just want to prevent that. We just want to make everybody in the household as comfortable as possible all week. While Jeannie heads off to the shops in search of some decent clothes, the Armstrong kids have a chance to get to know their new siblings. I like them because it was cool to hear their accents, because you never really I never really heard something like that before, so it's really cool. It's not just rock and roll that's forbidden. TV is also completely banned, so the kids have to create their own entertainment. OK, so you start off with two packs of cards, right. and then there's one person who, uh, who deals it to their left. So do you grab the potato as soon as somebody gets a four? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we keep going. Are you ready? Um, the real thing. Oh, we you know what? Over. I'm barren to go. Yeah, start over. I need, I need one by one. <laughs> I don't like this. Somebody? <laughs> Why are you going to win? No, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> Earlier, Jeannie noticed a breach of the female dress code. Anna. Yes? <laughs> Can I talk to you for a second? Anastasia is about to get a taste of the latest fashion Sorry. from the House of Armstrong. 
I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be curious if he's back. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> you said you were just going to have a talk with him. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, I do want to talk about the clothes thing. If you sit down, I don't want anybody to be able to see your underwear or, you know, I just need it to be modest enough. So I want to show you the things that I got for you. That looks like the bit what an eight-year-old would wear. Really? Yeah. I would never wear that. It'd make me feel like a boy. I would really? never wear that. Come on, it could look pretty good. Come on, look at this. Ta-da! I don't really like the styles of the top. Really? OK, now I know this is plain, but picture yourself out working. I hate that material. I really don't want to wear any of your clothes. This is not cleavage at all. It's but, just showing but, a little bit. It wouldn't be good for my kids to see, oh, mom's bending so much on rules. But this is not low, and I'm not changing. It will feel so much better just to yield. I'm not going back downstairs. I think there's maybe been power struggles at home where she's been used to winning and not definitely, I would assume, not submitting to parental authority. It kind of breaks my heart that we weren't going to be together as a family with her, but I really felt like it was important to stick to the simple things I've asked. It's important to me not to bend on any rule, any rules that I strongly believe in, because I'm not changing myself. Like, the whole purpose of being here is to change the way you act, not to change you. It's just like mental. It's Monday morning. Yeah, this is the time to get up with okay? you. You could be down in about five. Okay. Anastasia's already been up for hours going through her clothes. She won't be welcomed back into the bosom of the family until she covers hers. This top isn't too like low cut and high. It's quite high. So if she has a problem with it, then there's nothing I can do about it. In the Armstrong household, children are expected to help out, starting with breakfast. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have a little brother. I can't believe I haven't asked you that. And how old is he? He's 13. He's 13, OK. Yeah. So what do you, do you guys like both take turns cooking or? No, we don't take turns. So your mom does all the cooking? Um, yeah. Okay. What about like washing clothes and? Yeah, my mom washes clothes. Mom washes clothes. Your mom can actually say, Anna, would you make lunch, or and you can actually you you feel comfortable just looking at her, telling her no. Yeah. Do you really feel good in your, in, in your heart when you just tell her no like that? It doesn't really bother me. It doesn't bother you. Yeah. All right, everybody ready? This looks very good, girls. Excellent. Let's do this before it gets cold. Mealtimes are a chance for the Armstrong family to come together and talk, something Eden's not used to. So do you all eat together? It is a bit manic at our house. That's the bit. I said, everyone eats, like, different things. And, like, most of the time, I'll eat in my room. We'll go separate ways. How's your relationship with your mom? One day, it can be really good. I'll play them really bad. We argue a lot as well. I argue a lot. I try to get away from home. It's all really hostile environment. It's like, what do you guys like argue while you eat? Sometimes. <laughs> don't even talk. Not me. <laughs> you don't even talk. No. <laughs> what is this? Is there so much tension? Okay. Yeah, usually. So is that one of the reasons why you came here? Thinking that it'd be nice to get away from that for a while, or just yeah, just get away from it really pretty nice. A bit of a break. I was just asking uh, Anna 
Like your mom asks you to do something. She just yeah. says, and you can just look at her right now and just say no. Yeah. And you're comfortable with that? Yeah. I'm used to it. When you walk away, like in the other room, and you're quiet, do you really feel like, yes, this is okay, that I look at my mother that raised me, that loves me, that provides for me? Do you really feel like that's okay to say no? Mm hmm. Hard work is at the core of the Armstrong family values, and Lindsay wants to get the team started as soon as possible. In this family, helping others is you know, something that is really important, and I'm going to take them to a special place where they get a chance to experience that opportunity. What is it? Something to do with kids. Yay! Oh, no. Oh, it's, a it's like a charity shop. Yeah. This charity shop raises almost £16,000 a month for one of Orlando's largest children's homes. But with only two full-time staff, Manager Debbie needs all the help she can get. We have lots of volunteers here that come to do their service at the thrift store. We sort clothes, hang clothes, you know, do a little bit of everything here, plus the upkeep of the store. But if the kids that come here behave badly, I have sent them home on occasion. Hi, Debbie. This Hi. is Anna. Hi, Anna. Anna. Do you like to be called Anna? or? Whatever. OK. This is Eden. Hi, Eden. My it's nice to meet you. This for the week. OK, good. And um, Debbie will be in charge of you, and one of the main things is obedience. OK, give me a hug. Oh, oh, oh. And I'll see you in a little while. OK. <laughs> All right, okay. see you guys later. OK. Do good. OK. All right? They will. OK, excellent. <laughs> OK. Um, Anastasia, I think what I'm going to have you do today is um, do the windows on the outside. Do you know how to do windows, clean windows? No. No. OK, then we'll teach you. If you want to just start down here at the very end, just put this part in here. Just start up at the top. And I would do just like maybe sections at a time and then just go over it with the other side like this. OK? What I'm going to have you do is um, just take one of these trash cans here on rollers and go around the parking lot. If you just kind of sweep it up and throw it in the trash out there for me. For someone who takes such pride in their appearance, picking up rubbish doesn't appeal. I'm on window number one and there's about 20 left. Chesh's answer to Lindsay Lohan wasn't born to clean windows. The windows are streaking. On that, the, the, it's from the water, the excess water yeah, in that out there. I can't reach it though, and I don't know how to do it. I'm not a window cleaner, so. See what I'm saying here? Just those few smut. You could just spray a little bit of Windex on it and just wipe it down with the towel. It won't be that hard to do. Okay. Okay. Out back, Eden's reached his own conclusions about working at the thrift store. This is a complete waste of time. It's only going to get, it's only going to get dirty again. And I just want to be sitting getting a tan in this weather, not being, not sweating, I'm not being, not sweeping up rubbish. Eden! Are you finished? Too hot. I know, it's very hot, but I've done the same thing you're doing lots of times. It only gets dirty again. Pardon me? So it's only going to get dirty again. So I know, well, it's not an easy job to do, but we have to do it. Anastasia decides she's donated more than enough of her time for one day. I've finished the windows now, I don't. Did you do the ones on the side yet? No, I can't be really doing any more. Like, I've just done loads and I thought that was it. Well, 
just if you just finish up over there and then that way you'll be inside after that you can do the ones on the inside no i don't want to i don't want to. i'm not doing any more windows i can't do any more windows honey i know you don't want to but that's part of the job it's not a job is it because i'm not getting paid for it well i know but you're i hope you're learning something from this experience yeah, well, i'm gonna learn that when you do i don't want to do any more well i i guess if you don't want to do any more windows then you're probably finished right do you want me to call Mr. Armstrong? Do you want me to call him and have him come and come and get you? I don't want to do any more here. Okay, that's fine. Hello? Hi, Mr. Armstrong. This is Debbie at the Edgewood Children's Ranch. Hey, Debbie. Listen, I have a little problem. Um, I was wondering if you might be able to come and pick Anastasia and Eden up. Okay. Yes. I think it's just probably best that they just go ahead and leave. What happened? Nothing. I, 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 I didn't do nothing wrong. I, all I said it was too hard. I want to be like given a different task. But I just don't want to work on the windows. Problem is, whenever you get a job, anything in life, you're going to do things you don't want to do. So let me ask you something. Can you finish this task today? Uh, if she lets us stay. Yeah. Hot or not, will you still do yes, it? Yes, I'll do it. Yes. Anna. This is a tough one sure. for you. I'm gonna go back to your... She's taken advantage of the fact that she's had two volunteers that know they haven't had a choice in the matter. And she's got me on a job that maybe somebody doesn't else want to do, like, I don't want to st stand here all day doing windows. It's not about the windows. It's about you doing what someone asks you to do and you don't want to. This is where you have to push through. All you have to do is say no to that self that says, I don't want to, and say, yes, I will do the inside windows, and that will be the reward. This work she has here is really, really important to her. Do you know this, what they do here, funds kids? This is really embarrassing. This is huge. The Armstrongs believe hard work is good for the soul. So Lindsay decides he will become the teenager's new boss. With 10 acres of land, there's plenty to be done. Ian, you ready? So the teens must fall in with Lindsay's troops. This is where it gets tough. We've got a lot to do. I would really love to take back this field and get everything done. My goal is to try to finish all this by the end of the day, but ultimately that they're going to feel that good feeling of not only seeing it done, but what hard work, that reward you get when you work hard, especially when you're not used to it. All this has to be raked. It's got to be raked like this, but what you got to do is just get them in a pile. All right, thanks. For Eden, image is everything, and he doesn't want dirty leaves on his outfit. I need to get up these leaves. Just rake it right on there. Rake it right up on there. Ain't got, ain't got to pick them up. I won't pick them up because they're filthy. They're so dirty. Eden, come on, son. Lindsay never takes no for an answer. And Eden's back chat will not be tolerated. When you, you looked at me and you said, either I'm not going to pick it up or I don't want to pick it up or something, you kind of snapped at me a little bit. I just want to pick up with my hands because it's filthy. It was sort of it's snappy. It was just snappy, and I'm not used to that. I just don't want to do it. If I had asked you to pick it up with your hands, you'd have got mad at me, or what No, you... I just wouldn't have done it. I, just, I wouldn't have done it if I had to pick up with my hands. Um, is it like that at home? And your mom just said, I need you to pick this up with your hands, and you just can say no, I don't want to, and then leave. Yeah, I just put it back to my room and walk out. That's one of the major, major issues, is that you have to learn to do what you're told whether you feel like it or not. All right, let's do it. We'll get you started out here. Lindsay has diffused the tension, and Eden reluctantly goes back to work. He's mad about something. He's, he's something that's really, really bothering him. And when you push him too far, he's just flat out not going to do it. He's convinced himself. It's rebellion. I wouldn't think of talking to my parents like that. It's just too disrespectful. You know, I would 
probably not be here if I did. <laughs> I'd just be like, leave. All right, let's do this thing. At home, Anastasia doesn't lift a finger. But now she has a new father to answer to. This has got to be painted. You don't have to go all the way down to the dirt, but come down to this line right here. Let's go all the way down to the end. I don't want to have to feel like I've got to do it, like. You better get started. OK? All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sitting comfortably on the lawnmower, manual labor doesn't seem so arduous. I want to go on the lawn mower. This is just seems lonely and boring. Anastasia's had enough and abandons her post. The fence got boring, so I walked off because I just don't see the point in having to do something that you don't want to. It was going on pretty good, but then um, she decided that she wasn't going to paint the fence. So um, I'm not sure how we're going to deal with it, but hopefully everything turns out OK. I really need you to come down. We need to talk. We really need to talk. This is real important. The day's almost over, and there are leaves to be raked, grass to be mown, and the fence to be painted. Lindsay's determined to get things back on track. In our home, if one of my children say, no, I'm not, to me, I have a huge problem that I have to deal with. You have to be trained and taught how to respond in life. Dogs get trained, animals get trained, not children. So if I ask you to do the rest of the fence, you're going to say no again. I don't want to do it. I really don't think this is about the fence. It is about the fence. I don't want to paint a fence anymore. And stop saying that it's not about it, because it is. It's a fence, and I don't want to paint it anymore. It's annoying me. I need you to paint the fence. I know you do, but I don't want to. Well, then you're not listening again, right? You're I'm not... saying no to me. Well, what are you doing? You're not even doing anything. You go paint the fence. I don't want to do it anymore. So you're saying no to me again, then? Yes, I don't want to do it anymore. Twice in one day. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Do you know what's really annoying me the most, though? He's not doing anything. What's he doing? He should have to do the chores as well. He should have to paint fences. He should have to cut grass. He even got a list for himself. Like, you only live once, so why should you have to do something that somebody else wants you to do? It seems to me she's used to uh, overriding authority. She's been walking in that way for a little while. I really don't know how I'm going to deal with it. Um, I'm not used to it with my kids. Because I feel like the right thing to do is I can't just let her keep saying no when she feels like it. So we'll see. Overnight, Lindsay and Jeannie have discussed Anastasia's behavior and reached a decision. I pray for Anna's heart that she know how much we care for her, love her, and really want her to stay. Hi. Can you talk to just for a little bit? I, yeah. have some water. I am struggling. I just want to be honest with you. Um, what is is really hard for us to to get used to or to swallow is just saying no. I'm not going to do it. We can't go on with any more resistance of no. I just won't do that. Or, or we have to bend in ways we don't feel like we should. So if you don't fit in with the program, fully, I mean fully, if you don't, then you have to go home, literally. And I need you to make that decision pretty much now. 
I just, I have a habit of just like, when I get frustrated, everything just like word vomit comes out. And then like, it comes to like half an hour afterwards when I've cooled down, it just seems like, oh, I did I react like that. I shouldn't have reacted like that. I have to draw the line and you're gonna have to make a decision. I don't want to come home yet. I want to finish out the week. OK. Did you know what were you about to say? <laughs> Here's the big one. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really need you to go finish that fence tonight. Mm. So is, is that a yes? OK, yeah, I will do. I've just actually been given the choice to go home and see my friends, and I'd much rather just stay here painting a fence. So, I don't know what's happening to me. I'm learning that in life, like, you do have to do things that you don't want to do, and you should just get on with it, because then it just... It's more peaceful with people, rather than it being tense and, like, awkward. It's halfway through the teen stay in Astatula, and Lindsay has scheduled an evening of family fun. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The Armstrongs are pleased to see the regime is starting to pay off. Earlier on, Anne and I um, definitely uh, hit some serious walls. But I believe if I were to ask Anna tomorrow to go out and paint the fence again, um, she may look at me funny, but I, I do believe she I would do it. She would. I believe she would do it. <laughs> I definitely think Eden's been more closed than Anna. A little harder to, to see what's going on inside. Hides it a little better. Eden rarely sees his own father who we only met for the first time six months ago. I believe that it was best that I brought Eden up on my own without his influence, because I didn't feel there would be positive. So it really got to the point where um, a lot of his anger um, was really directed towards me. He blamed me for his father not being about, and I feel like it really became the right time for Eden to meet his dad. My dad, he's like, I've known him for so, what, six months, and me and him are so close. I mean, me and my mum have known each other for 16 years, and we're not, no, nowhere near as close as I feel. I suppose I was a bit naive, or a bit, you know, really hoped that him meeting his dad would make a big difference to me, but I'm wondering sometimes if it's actually made him worse. I just want to get this area right here. Concerned about Eden being withdrawn, Lindsay decides to join him with his morning chores. Do you get a chance to do any kind of work with your dad? Like your, like your real dad? Not really, no. You feel like, you know, you want to... I know it's a tough subject, but you feel like, you know, you want to get closer to your dad, do stuff with him? He's so busy. I'm like one of ten siblings, so... He's got ten kids? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's busy. You know, I, um... I haven't had a chance to tell you everything about my past. There was a lot of alcohol, and, mm -hmm. my, and my father was, like, gone a lot. He was a musician. Mm -hmm. And it was like, what I really wanted was I just wanted him to do stuff with me. You know, it was rare for him to, like, take me out, teach me how to cut the lawn, or mm -hmm. teach me how to throw a baseball or whatever. He, he, wanted, he wanted, like, um, he didn't want to make my sort of, like, future for bad, so he sort of, moved, he sort of for, his, for my own good, he sort of moved away, stayed away. Okay. Wow. I think I just kind of grew cold to it and just thought, well, this is kind of how it's going to be, you know? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm like, so... Yeah, just kind of... You get used to it. And yeah, like, you do. You have you to just have to accept it. Mm-hmm. Because my dad, he's really so much better. I think my dad might as well not be a dad if he, if he is, because he sort of, like, raises the game so much higher and makes him, makes him look really bad, but... My dad's my dad, and there's nothing I can do about that. And Lindsay's their dad. You have to admire, you have to sit back and admire how good he is. After his chat with Eden, Lindsay has decided the teens are ready for another trip to the outside world. 
Okay, guys. Today, I'm gonna take you to Edgewood Ranch. So it's cool. gonna be kind of neat. Yeah. All right. He's arranged for them to help out at the Edgewood Children's Ranch, a purpose-built village on the outskirts of Orlando, where troubled kids are sent as a last chance to get their lives back on track. If the children don't come to Edgewood, the next step is probably juvenile prison. Uh, this is the step before the serious problems set in. If you talk to our children, many of them have been in gangs and have been involved in gangs, and you ask them where they would be now if it weren't for Edgewood, many of them said they would be dead. Hello, Gabby. Hello, how are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Anastasia, nice to meet you. Eden, nice Eden. Nice to meet you. wonderful. Forever Great, come on, let's go in the kitchen. Right, the kitchen. So you guys, my goal today for Anna and Eden to meet these kids today, I really, really want them uh, to feel and sense what these kids have gone through. So hopefully it'll make an impact on their life to see how they have not appreciated the things that have been given them. So I'm really hoping it's gonna make a difference. Anastasia is shadowing Nicole, who's been at the ranch for nearly three years. Well, you want to get it all over so it can be dark, yes, yeah, so we can see it. We'll cook and we'll clean and we'll set up for dinner and we'll wash dishes and those different types of things. I tend to have fun when I do it, but it's, I like to cook. I feel the sense of accomplishment. Yeah, why are you here? Um, I'm basically doing and to just give my mum and dad more respect, really, like to learn how like different people live. Being here to teach you respect your parents and how to obey your parents when they tell you to do something. I wasn't too good at that, but no. now I'm I'm perfect. My mom, she she went trekking for the world now. Yeah. <laughs> the ranch children are raised by strict foster parents. They attend chapel three times a week, and girls and boys are segregated. Why are you here? Because I never did what mom told me to. I was always out late running with the boys and doing this and doing that that I know me personally shouldn't be doing. But I felt like my mom didn't care about me and I felt like my mom was just always nagging me all the time. So we came here for a tour and I was first, I was kind of like, I don't want to come here because I don't want nobody telling me when to go to bed when they get up, when they go to school, when not to go to school, you know? Mm -hmm. But I came anyway because this is what my mom really wanted from me because, I, I don't know, I guess I was just getting too much for her to handle. Do you enjoy it, Haya? I do, I do, except for not being able to talk to the guys, but no. besides <laughs> that, I really enjoy it here, you know? The ranch's strict diet of discipline and hard work is highly successful, with 92% of the kids able to go back home and back into school. This is Tanner. Nice to meet you, Tanner, this is Eden. Now, um, Tanner's going to show you around his cottage and kind of, will you kind of stick with him? Let's lead the way then. <laughs> Fifteen-year-old Tanner came to the ranch a year ago after being thrown out of school for fighting and truancy. When I got here, I was I was worried about the rules and wondering what what I have to do and what happened if I broke the rules and stuff. And what time did you get to bed? Uh, around like eight thirty-nine. Oh, that's pretty really early. <laughs> yeah, it's usually been about one. It's, it's, it's different here, so yeah. I wasn't very happy about that either. <laughs> so. Tanner's bad behavior was triggered by a death in his family. When I was growing up in my house, my when my mom and dad were together, mm. they would always argue a lot and just um, they would get in fights and stuff. And they got divorced when I was really young, when I was like three or four. And so they had a split custody, and mm -hmm. my mom had me most of the time. And when I was 11, my mom passed away from cancer, so my dad got full custody of me. Basically, ever since then, I just I didn't really try, because mm -hmm. my mom was the main one that gave me a lot of yeah. support. So I just stopped trying in school. And it's not like my dad didn't give me support or anything, yeah. but... It. It's just I didn't yeah. really see him a lot, so I didn't really pay attention to him. Then I got sent here, and 
I, I just, it really helps, and it's just, it's a lot better now. Like, um, it's just, it's a lot yeah. easier. It's like you've come a long way. Yeah. Well, if you can do it, and you've done it, you've done it a lot worse than me, surely I can do it. Mm -hmm. It's really inspiring to see someone like you that can do it. Kind of story sort of was really sort of like, it sort of shocked me a lot. I didn't wasn't expecting it. And so it really, so it did hit home that, that he never got to say sorry to his mum for what he did. And like, that, I still got a chance. With the teen's visit drawing to an end, Lindsay is keen to give Eden some advice before he goes home. So, this is getting close to the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the last time yeah. I can speak into your life as your father. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the biggest, biggest things that I had to understand that I want to impart to you mm -hmm. is forgiveness. Yeah. Massive. If you could find it in your heart, you know, to forgive your dad. You're only 16. You got a whole life. Here. <laughs> yeah. Don't stay, you know, don't stay angry and frustrated for, you know, you don't want to be my age and still mad and frustrated at everybody. <laughs> yeah. When you go back, you and your mom might be used to treating each other a certain way. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to be able to respond differently. Okay. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, this, this is like, really this nice. is so warm. Yeah, the wall back home is so cold. The chat I just had with Lindsay was really reassuring. And talking about like the things that won me up was really helpful. He put it so simply and opened it up to me that it's not it's not that hard to do. You just gotta think put your mind to it and you can do it. For the first time since he's been away from home, Eden receives news from his mother. Thank you. Letter? Yeah. You know where it's from? Mom. Right. Dearest Ede, I'm so proud that you've come so far despite a very rocky start for you in life. It's hard not to feel angry, frustrated, or disappointed when you've when you feel life has been being and continue to be unfair. <sighs> I love you, Eid. I always have and always will. You got my son, I want and only. Russ and Jen love you too. I still want you to be happy. See you soon, son. All my love and more, mum. <laughs> It's like hearing my mum's voice when I have her there, it just completely reminds me of her. And actually now I do miss her. I never thought I'd say that, but <laughs> I suppose I do. This is so important to let it out, you know. We want to hold back sometime, but you know, oh, no. letting it out is really part of the healing, so. And it really makes me want to say sorry now. It's just... Just well, I've, all the wrong things I've done. You think you need another hug? <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy for you. The time has come for the teens to leave Florida and return to their own families. Thank you for Thanks for listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they really did become part of our family. Yeah. I really believe that. They felt like they were our, our children for the week. So that was huge. Yeah, I can honestly <laughs> say I feel like this is one of the best things we've ever done. Yeah. And it was one of the hardest <laughs> decisions to make. <laughs> but it's really been wonderful. I'm gonna miss his family so much. Like the way they live is just like extraordinary, like I want to go back and like shine a completely different light on my life and stop being as lazy as spoiled because that's not going to get you anywhere. See you, son. <laughs> I think the Oshman family are a great family. They're a very loving family. And just being around them makes you want to love them back. We love you guys. We love you guys. 
Bye. Being here has changed my outlook, and when I get back to England, I'm really looking forward to just improving my relationship with my mum. I just hope that she comes back with more focus and to achieve her goals and just be more respectful to us as a family. Oh, how are you? Oh, how do you have a nice time? Yeah, that's good. Oh, you really look cute. Come on in, we'll get a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So have you learnt anything since you, with your experience? Yes, go on. I learnt if you just get on with what you've been asked to do, yeah, then it's easier it. and you get it done quicker and you spend more time complaining about it than actually doing Correct. it. So don't argue. Don't argue. Oh my gosh, have we got to change girl then? Have the we got to change it's Anastasia? No, so, I think we do. I did what I was told, not necessarily because I wanted to, but because I wanted to show more respect. And that's the same thing that I'm going to do with you. Oh, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> well done. Oh, yeah. That's the <laughs> She's only been home for like five minutes, and she seems to like rather than argue about what she's got to do. You know, she says she's going to. It's not worth. There's no point in arguing because that takes too much time. You might as well just do it. I definitely think she's learnt a hell of a lot from it, which is fabulous. I just can't wait to find out what's happened and what's been going on. I'm just hoping that, um, that we can just really move forward, me and Ede, and just respect each other for who we are. Just uh, just showing a bit of lack of respect, to be honest. It's <laughs> all right. It's, yeah, it's all right. I've learned it, and that's, that's what I went there to do, thanks. Apology accepted. When I left, it was very tense and, like, there was arguments, and I sort of learned now to, like, deal with it and, like, either move away from it or just do it and get out of the way. That's probably one of the main things I have learned. You've really come back and thought about things and you've really benefited from it that you have. And yeah. I think because you've benefited from it, we will now as a family, you know. You are a wonderful young man. Brilliant to see him. He just, um, just straight away. I can just feel the difference. Just from just having an apology it was brilliant. Now I've got a real belief in my heart that we will have a relationship and um, it's going to be good. So yeah, that's that's great. Brilliant.